let's see about lacrimal apparatus the lacrimal apparatus consists of the lacrimal glands and the lacrimal passages this lacrimal passages are made up of puncta canaliculi lacrimal sac and nasolacrimal duct called as nld coming to the lacrimal gland there are main lacrimal glands and accessory lacrimal glands so this is the main lacrimal gland the lacrimal gland and its ducts the lacrimal gland consists of two parts the orbital part and the palpebral part the orbital part it is of almond shape and it is situated in the fossa for the lacrimal gland next is the ducts of lacrimal gland the lacrimal gland has an average of 10 to 12 ducts which open in the lateral part of the superior fornix and some of those open also in the inferior fornix so the main part is the orbital part lacrimal gland is almond shape situated in the fossa for the lacrimal gland it has 10 to 12 lacrimal ducts which open majorly into the superior fornix some of them also open into the inferior fornix coming to the accessory lacrimal gland there are two accessory lacrimal glands which are glands of cross and glands of wolf ring the glands of cross are present on the upper fornix 42 in number they are also seen in the lower fornix but less they are 6 to 8 in number in the lower fornix next the blood supply blood supply to the lacrimal gland is by the lacrimal artery which is a branch of ophthalmic artery which is in turn a branch of internal carotid artery nerve supply of the lacrimal gland the sensory supply is by the lacrimal nerve which is a branch of the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve the sympathetic supply is through the carotid plexus which comes from the cervical sympathetic chain also there is secretory motor fibers to the lacrimal gland the secretory motor fibers to the lacrimal gland so the secretory motor pathway is as follows in the pons there is superior salivary nucleus from which the greater pituitary nerve arises then it goes to the pterygopalatine ganglion and later joins as the zygomatic nerve next branch is lacrimal nerve and this in turn supplies the lacrimal gland so this is the secretory motor pathway for the lacrimal gland the superior salivary nucleus from the pons gives the greater pituitary nerve which goes to the pterygopalatine ganglion forms the zygomatic nerve and then forms the lacrimal nerve it finally reaches the lacrimal gland let's see the lacrimal passage this is the eye the lateral canthus and the medial canthus and these two points are the puncta the superior puncta and the inferior puncta from the puncta there comes canaliculi this is the upper canaliculi and this is the lower canaliculi this canaliculi is in turn made up of two parts the vertical part and the horizontal part and then the upper and the lower canaliculi join together to form the common canaliculi which then enter the lacrimal sac so this entire sac is the lacrimal sac which continues as the nasolacrimal duct this is the nasolacrimal duct and this nasolacrimal duct is around 15 to 18 mm in size and it is guarded by the valve of hasner at its opening so here there will be a valve of hasner through which the nld opens this opens in the inferior turbinate in the inferior meatus so the direction of the nasolacrimal duct it runs downwards backwards and laterally so this is the passage for the flow of tears from the eye to the superior and inferior canaliculi from there into the common canaliculi lacrimal sac nasolacrimal duct and then into the nose next is the tear film the tear film is made up of three layers from inside to outside the layers are mucus layer aqueous layer and the lipid layer mal mucus aqueous and lipid from inner to outer 
the mucus layer is 0 to 2 micrometer in thickness and this is a hydrophilic layer the water loving layer next is the aqueous layer 7 micrometer in diameter this aqueous layer secretes sodium chloride sugar urea protein and it also has antibacterial substances like lysozyme beta lysine and lactoferrin which gives the antibacterial nature to the tears next the L lipid layer is 0.1 micrometer in thickness and this decreases the evaporation of the tears and it also lubricates the eyelids so this is the function of all the three layers of the tear film mucus layer aqueous layer and the lipid layer from inner to outer functions of the tear film the tear film keeps the cornea and the conjunctiva moist it provides oxygen to the corneal epithelium and it washes away the debris and the noxious substances it prevents infections because of the antibacterial nature and it facilitates the movement of the lids so these are the five main functions of the tear film it keeps the corneal conjunctiva moist provides oxygen to the corneal epithelium washes away debris and noxious substances prevents infections and facilitates the movement of the lids now let's see about the secretion of tears so there are two different ways of tear secretion one is basal secretion next is reflex secretion basal secretion is secretion which occurs throughout the day irrespective of any stimulus and this is done by the accessory glands then the reflex secretion this reflex secretion of tears is by the main lacrimal glands and it has an afferent and the efferent pathway the afferent pathway is by the fifth nerve and the efferent pathway is by the secretor motor pathway which you have seen already the elimination of tears the main elimination of tears is by evaporation and the second mechanism the remainder of the tears collects at the lacculus lacrimalis that is the inner canthus so the 70 percent of the tears get collected in the inferior canaliculus whereas only 30 percent get collected in the superior canaliculus this occurs by the lacrimal pump mechanism by the orbicularis oculi muscle so from the canaliculus through the lacrimal passage it enters into the lacrimal sac and finally into the nasolacrimal duct when we close the eyes the eyelids close so there is contraction of the pretarsal orbicularis oculi due to which the ampulla compresses and the canaliculi short turns this propels the tear fluid from the ampulla and the horizontal canal towards the lacrimal sac and also during the contraction the preceptal fibers of the orbicularis oculi contracts when we close the eyelids and this distends the lacrimal sac creating a negative pressure due to which it draws the tear fluid from the canaliculi into the lacrimal sac so both these mechanisms are responsible for the drainage of the tears when we close the eyelids the pretarsal orbicularis oculi contraction and also the contraction of the preceptal fibers of the orbicularis oculi in different mechanisms next when we open the eyes that is when we open the eyelids there is relaxation of the pretarsal orbicularis oculi muscle and also the relaxation of the preceptal fibers that is the hornus muscle so the pretarsal orbicularis muscle relaxes due to which the canaliculi and the ampulla expands and this draws the tear fluid from the lacus lacrimalis and the preceptal fibers that is the hornus muscle also relaxes due to which there is positive pressure generated this forces the tears into the nasolacrimal duct so this is the mechanism of the flow of tears when we close the eyelids as well as when we open the eyelids so that's all about the anatomy and physiology of the lacrimal apparatus thank you